Hello everybody, today we'll talk about sound diffraction. Sound diffraction is the bending of sound waves around small objects or obstacles. It is also the spreading of sound waves beyond small openings. Sound diffraction is the reason why we are able to hear something although we cannot see it. And the diffraction depends on the wavelength of the wave as well as the size of the obstacles or opening. So let's talk some basics. So what are low frequency waves? Low frequency waves are characterized by having a large wavelength. As you can see in the picture, the wavelength is pretty large. So let's consider a low frequency wave with a frequency of 500 hertz. What is the wavelength? So you can use the relation C equals F lambda, so C is the speed of sound, F is the frequency of the wave, and lambda is the wavelength of the wave. So for simplicity purposes, I'm just using the speed of sound as 340. So if you compute, you get 0.68 meter. So for diffraction to occur, the size of the obstacle must be less than or equal to 0.68 meter or 68 centimeter. Now what are high frequency waves? High frequency waves are characterized by having a small wavelength because they have a higher frequency. So as you can see in the picture, the wave looks pretty compressed because it has a small wavelength. And let's consider a high frequency wave of, with a frequency of 5000 Hz, so it's like 10 times larger. And if you plug it in the equation, you get a smaller wavelength, so 0.068 meter. So again, for diffraction to occur, the size of the obstacle must be less than 0.068 meter. <clears throat> So let's talk about obstacle size and the influence of opening on diffraction. So sound diffraction is more pronounced when the size of the obstacle is comparable to the size of the wavelength, as we saw in the previous calculation. So let's consider there's a sound source on the left and there's a large obstacle in the center. So we, we can see that the obstacle size is very large compared to the wavelength of the sound. And so the obstacle typically blocks the sound acting like a barrier. So there is no, you know, there's no sound on the other side. I mean, there may be some transmission, but from the diffraction perspective, it's, it's not going to work here. And so hence, there is an acoustic shadow on the other side. Now, let's say the obstacle size is small compared to the wavelength of the wave. So what's going to happen in this case is the wave is under going to go, you know, undergo diffraction. So the wave will bend around the obstacle and there's a diffracted sound on the other side. Now, now here we'll talk about the influence of opening size. So the opening also has an influence on the extent of sound diffraction. For a given wavelength, smaller the opening size, greater is the diffraction. So in this case, there's a small opening and there is dif diffracted sound on the other side. However, if the opening is very large, there is not much diffraction. The sound is, you know, as is just going to go pass through the large opening. Let's talk some real life examples of obstacles and opening sizes. Let's say you're sitting in a concert hall in front of a pillar. You know, unfortunately, you're sitting in front of a pillar, so you can't really see uh, the concert, but let's see if we can hear it. So the obstacle size has a width of 30 centimeter or 0.3 meter. So in order for the observer to hear the sound, you know, the wavelength of the wave must be larger than the obstacle size. Now, the obstacle size is fixed in this case, which is, you know, the pillar of width 30 centimeter or 0.3 meter. So let's do the calculation. We know the equation C equals F lambda. We know uh, the size. So we want the wavelength to be larger than that. So plug that value, plug the speed, and you get the frequency of 1133 hertz. So what it means is the observer will be able to hear the sound with frequencies less than 113, 1133 hertz due to diffraction because that frequency, those frequencies below are going to have wavelength larger than this obstacle size and higher frequencies are either absorbed or reflected. But keep in mind that we are only talking from the diffraction perspective. This is like a complex acoustic environment. There's like lots of reflections and absorption going on. But then from the diffraction perspective, yes, the observer will be able to hear all the sounds less than 1133 hertz. Now, the next example is about openings. Let's say you're inside a room having a phone conversation. You have closed the door, but then the door has an opening of like one centimeter or 0.01 meter at the bottom. So let's say there are people outside the room. Will they be able to hear you? Now, the door is just a regular door. And let's do the calculation. So we know the opening size, which is one centimeter or 0.01 meter. And again, for diffraction to occur, the wavelength of the wave must be larger than this opening size. So if you plug in the values, the speed of sound, we get the frequency to be 34,000 hertz. That's like beyond the human hearing range. So the observer will, will be able to hear sound with frequencies less than 34,000 due to diffraction. Now, anything less than 34,000 is like everything because human hearing range is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so, which means literally that the observer on the other side will be able to hear everything. 
Now, this is this is what happens, but uh, you know the level may be vary because of absorption reflection. But then, given this opening size, people can hear you on the other side. That's why uh, you know when we when you want to maintain confidentiality, you go for rooms with door seals. So, just for curiosity's sake, uh, can human head diffract sound waves? Yes. So human head can act as an obstacle and diffract sound waves. So the average width of a human head is 16 centimeter or 0.16 meter. So again, sound waves with wavelength larger than this would be audible due to diffraction. If you do the computation, you get 2125 hertz. So if a human is standing in front of you and you're behind him and there's a sound source in front of that human, so you'll be able to hear frequencies less than 2125 due to diffraction of the particular human's head. You know leaving aside all the other phenomena, I'm just focusing on diffraction. So here's an animation of diffraction. The On the other uh, left side, you have a small opening, so there is diffraction, whereas on the right side, you have a very large opening, so there is not much diffraction. So you can see it. So this is the diffraction, small opening. And here's a diffraction with no diffraction in the large opening case. All right, to conclude, sound diffraction is a bending of sound waves around small objects or obstacles. Sound diffraction depends on the wavelength of the wave as well as the size of the obstacle or being. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.